All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you what a day in the life of an actor is like. So, as many of you know, I studied for economics for three years, and then I decided once I graduated last year that I wanted to change, so I went into acting. I'm currently doing a master's in professional acting at Aura, and this is with the aim of having a career in acting. So many people have asked what a day in the life of an actor is truly like, and I think today's video is perfectly gonna sum up what my life would entail over the next few years, and it's the, just the knit and grit of what it's like to try and be an up and coming actor. So if you are an aspiring actor, you are interested in how movies are made, how films are made, today you're gonna to be finding out lots of behind the scenes stuff, some cold, hard, unexpected truths about filmmaking that if you kind of, when you watch something on TV or Netflix like Bridgerton, you think, oh, that's, that's easy. But no, 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 no. Trust me, some of the stuff is actually so hard. So yeah, I'm a young actor um, based in London. Cast me, please. My hair's recently turned curly, which ever since I grew my hair out in Australia, my hair's turned curly, and now I'm embracing this. This is why I probably look so different to many of you. Um, I don't know how it turned curly. Random. And so before we jump into a day in the life of an actor, I feel I must just clear up a few misconceptions that some people may have about filmmaking. The first is that when stuff is filmed, it's never filmed in chronological order. What I mean by this is that the scenes we was filming on the first day of the shoot were the very end of the, the film, and the scenes that we filmed on the very last day of the shoot were the very start of the film. Normally when you watch something you just expect, oh yeah, they filmed this first, then that, then the third episode, then the fourth episode. The likelihood is they probably filmed the very end of the series first, if that was convenient uh, to the location, to the budget, or stuff like that. Sometimes people think the easiest shot to get is somebody walking. Whoa. I can assure you, as you'll see in this upcoming video, one of the longest shots we did was walking down a hallway. It is so hard to get the blocking right, the focused people involved. It can be a real nightmare to get the simplest of shots sometimes. It can be a real time consumption problem when you're trying to get these basic shots of somebody walking, because, I mean, you're walking, what, what, what's there possibly to do? But it's actually so specific on the day of filming because you, you have to mark out every every single like step and ah. Uh. And finally, sometimes in the day in the life of an actor, as I'm sure you've seen before, as you'll see in some of these behind the scenes clips, sometimes I'm delivering lines to a wall. Why am I doing that? Because sometimes you have to cheat a shot because for whatever reason, time or logistically the building doesn't work, it's so much more simpler and the only way to do a shot uh, is to deliver it to nobody, to a wall. This will, that will probably look very, very weird in this behind the scenes video sort of thing when I deliver a line to a wall, but that is what sometimes happens. And of course, in the final edit, nobody would notice. So with them common misconceptions cleared up, let's get into what a day in the life of an actor looks like. So the day started, I woke up half six, very early call time, we was planning to shoot all day, had some breakfast, got changed, packed my clothes, and all the stuff you know you need for the day, like hair, comb, obviously hair. Then my Uber arrived, no surprise it was a Toyota Prius. I always wonder why every Uber is a Toyota Prius. Basically, I asked the guy, and he said that a Toyota Prius in places like London, when it drives sub 30 miles an hour, it uses electric, and it's rechargeable, so, when you're stopping and starting all the time, the Toyota Prius is the most cost efficient car. Insider information there. So then I met up with the crew, the director and some cast, and then we drove for another two hours. Uh, one of the crew drove us there to the location in Hungerford, this ginormous manor house. It was a 16 bedroom manor house, which literally was in this location in the middle of nowhere. Animals in the fields on the back, massive rooms, massive walls, fireplaces. It was a very cool location. And if you follow my Insta, you'll have seen lots of uh, behind the scenes footage. And then obviously, you know, we arrive in the room, there's some tea, coffee, biscuits. We have a lot of, you know, loads of coffee in the paper cup. Have some bourbon biscuits, some of them custard cream biscuits. Standard English tea and biscuits. <laughs> and then 
you know, the cast and crew come come walking in, have a little introduction, the birds are out, the crew are setting up, and then just, you know, you have a chat with the cast, you know, what's your experience? Oh, the industry's so hard. We just gotta keep working hard, we can do it. I believe everyone here is talented, you know, that's sort of chat. Um, and, then, and then we got called for the very first scene of the day. So one of the very first scenes of the day that I did was this drinking scene at night. Uh, we cleared out the dining room. I had to chug some water. They was doing this like cool like flip shot. Um, and I had to then deliver a line to nobody because the way the camera was flipping and post it would look good but there wasn't room for another person to be there. I probably had about three, four liters of water during this chugging thing because you have to do take after take after take just to make sure you get it right. Um, and obviously anything you do in acting has to be real, it has to be believable. So when I was chugging it, I wasn't, you know, what probably some people do when you're playing J-Ho or, you know, waterfall. You don't just chug and not let any of it in your mouth because the camera will pick that up. I actually had to chug everything, you know? Also, if you would do that in J-Ho or Waterfall, you're a snake. But um, anyway, I'm not trying to peer pressure anyone into drinking, okay? Just, if it's in a can, you're safe, but just be wary. If it's glass, you're not safe. Get over yourself. Cool, yeah. So yeah, I did that scene, we collected some dead sound for the room, and then we moved on to the next scene. Now this scene was probably the most time consuming scene I've ever done in my life so far. It probably took us hours, maybe an hour or two to do this one scene where we walked down this corridor. So the director and the crew started setting up for this next scene. Because you're not gonna get all of them then in this job. I got my instructions on what to do, and then we started rolling with this scene. Now, this next scene was the most time-consuming scene I think I've ever done, because the, t the corridor was tiny, the camera was on this track, and um, we had to walk down this, this hallway with a bit of a turn back, deliver a line, and in a film it will look effortless, but to get everything the right speed, and you can see by the, like this time-lapse went on for about an hour, I've sped this up to 2,000% speed, the amount of people in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, that's crazy. But we got there in the end, and this was roughly the final product. And you can see my, my face, the delight afterwards when it was done. <laughs> I was just like deadpan. So that was the next scene we did that day. And like, when you're an actor, you'll understand once you've done a few short films or a few different projects, how specific you have to be with certain movements. Switch on and be patient and just, I walked up and down that corridor 20, 30 times at least. So yeah, then next up in the day, it was just before lunch. Basically, I feel like on set, food and stuff like that gets delayed by like four or five hours. So because stuff normally falls behind schedule, we had lunch at about four. Um, but anyway, me and Kwame after that scene, we'd finished up and we was just like chilling out. We wasn't needed. So we sat in this manor house dining room by the fireplace. We were just like, a fireplace is magical. We were kicking back, relaxing like this, our feet by the fire, uh, you know, just talking about life, getting real philosophical because that's what a fireplace does. Yeah, let's wait for everybody else to have lunch, whatever. So we waited about three hours. By the end of the three hours, his Doc Martens had melted and they were just like super soft. And he kind of, he was like, yeah, yeah, like looks down at his shoe. He goes to stand up, he's like, oh, bro. And we feel his shoe and his shoe is like pokey soft. And we were just, they just it was so no, funny no. because we were like, we were entranced by this fireplace. Okay, the fireplace is great. Then we had lunch. Obviously, it was a very budget production. Had a, you know, £1.50 curry from um, Sainsbury's, some homemade rice. And then we moved on to um, some other scenes outside the manor house this time. But obviously, before that, we had to get a few pictures because, you know, if you're... Pictures are good for marketing. You have to market yourself very well as an actor. So we started getting a few pictures. Somebody told me to hold the clapperboard and then the director was there. I was like, no, I can't hold the clapperboard. You hold this because, you know, it's, it's, I, I can't take credit for pretending to be the director. Um, so I did a few photos. The, um, we used a focus tape measure to see how high somebody could get it. So if you're uh, involved in set and you're watching this, I challenge you to get a higher and if you be that, then congratulations. So yeah, then we started filming another scene, wrapped up, all good. Uh, if you're wondering what it's like when everybody's in the room, everybody's nice and like quiet because it's on set, um, all the people in the room. Let me show you this. Somebody took a behind the scenes video of me delivering one small walk and one small line. And um, you can kind of get a gist of what it's like in the room and just how s silent it is. Do about 
So we continued filming into the night. We ritually wrapped up probably about half eight, nine, then drove back home. And I'll put some pictures on screen now of what uh, some of the monitor shots, some of the you know before and after shots. So one was so one one was shot before um, looking at the camera. One was color graded in post um, for a pro promo image for the film. And you can see just how like crisp and clear the quality is. So then we drove home, arrived home, Ubered at home, boom, bed, sleep, wake up, repeat. Like it's, it's acting is a serious ordeal. Like it's, especially when you're on the up and the coming is so tiring to do, but you learn so much. Like the, the more projects you can get yourself involved in the better. So yeah, that is what a day in the life of an actor looks like. If you did enjoy today's video, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know if you want more acting content. It's gonna be on the way. I'm due to do a day in the life at drama school very soon. And pray for me, hopefully I get some more projects come through. Yeah, feel free to connect with me questions let me know like subscribe see you again soon all up in my head that's how i be head passing up the same waking up the same all up in my head that's just how i be head how i be head